Hello everyone, Alistair Gold here. That wasn't what I expected. That was not what I anticipated being at the end of a wet and long trip up to Manchester. Um, I don't know why, because when you think about it, there's so many times that Spurs absolutely cause chaos for Man City. Certain players keep scoring against Man City. Yeah, I must admit, I doubted them. I doubted the fact that they had such a battered, um, makeshift, patchwork team. How in the world would they possibly come away with anything from the Etihad Stadium with a team that had full four fullbacks, four wingers, and surely no chance of keeping out the might of Manchester and all of their goals and billions spent on quality. Um, how? How would that even be possible? Somehow, Tottenham Hotspur returned home with a point from Manchester. Um, it was uh, a tale of two halves, as the old cliche would go. And at times it was like Spurs were kind of riding a bucking bronco, just clinging on for dear life, especially in that first half. But they made it. They made it to the end of the time and the bronco did not buck them off. Um, <laughs> that sounds weird. Incredible, really. Some of the stuff that happened. Look, they rode their luck. They rode the Bronco. They rode their luck. Um, I mean, City hit the woodwork three times. I mean, one Doku chance hit the crossbar and post in one go. Erling Haaland was, unusually for him, pretty horrendous in front of goal. And I think a lot of frustration at the end was born of that as well. Um, I mean, there was a couple of chances. He was right in front of goal and just had to tap it home almost. I think people maybe mistook the fact that... I think people really saw that high line with nine men against Chelsea playing on the, the halfway line, in which they were just trying a way of at least getting the Spurs players near the goal to score while trying to catch Chelsea offside. And I think that's kind of got associated as the Postacoglu way, as, as if to say, oh, the Postacoglu way is 100% taking risks. There's no... Security is no safety to it. There's no defensive structure to it. And that's just rubbish. That's not how it is. We saw that with Romero and Van der Ven in that back line. They were conceding so few goals, really. And some of the goals they were conceding were really unfortunate. Um, yeah, his system isn't like that. It's more about the principles than the way they kind of set up. So, like, Postacoglu is not daft. He knows that at the Etihad Stadium, you're not going to get as much of the ball as you expect. And you're going to have to weather the storm at times, purely because of the quality that City possess. But it's about what you do with the ball when you've got it. And so there were moments when Spurs were almost a little bit counter-attacking, especially first half, obviously, he wasn't as happy with that. But that's all part of his process. If there are moments when you have to attack at pace, that's going to happen as part of the system. It's like, I think there's a kind of this misconception that Spurs are going to look to dominate every single match they play. And that's not really the way it works. It's about having the intention to take risks and the um, yeah, the ability to, to not worry or, or fear what's going to happen if you do this, if you take option A and, and, and you know try to pass around the team. So, yeah, I think too much was made beforehand about it. Don't get me wrong. I, I, was, I, I was among those who... Um, was a little bit fearful about it was mainly to do with the personnel about what would happen at City and I was very pleasantly surprised at the end result but yeah I think people have kind of have got this thing about him as if he's like this guy that's rocked up with crazy tactics um, and it's not like that this guy's been managing for 28 years he's managed at World Cups against you know big teams sorry at, managed at a World Cup with um, you know uh, a lesser strength kind of Argent uh, Argentinian Australian side playing against big teams, um, and he hasn't like gone kamikaze. That's not his, that's not the way his football is, um, and he's you know gone to all these different countries and he's won league titles. You don't do that and have that much experience in the game by just going la 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 attack 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 attack. That's just not how it works. Um, it's it's about there is a structure in there and it's it's quite a solid structure as well. 
and that's what brings him success and that's why he's got so much confidence in what he's doing because he knows it's not just this all or nothing crazy style of football it's just a very clever attack based game but with a very solid foundation to it um i thought son was excellent as i always say to you once in a while i'll look back at a player's performance uh, having seen more than just what we saw at the game and see little moments that they were involved in and be even more impressed with them and sonny is definitely one of those players for me after that performance um like i say terrific goal he just gets in city's head City are so scared of him. You can see the players backing off him as soon as he gets the ball. Um, he scored a boatload of goals against City home and away. Um, and what I really like about him as well is that he's really taking on another one of the Kane mantles, and that's to come deep to the centre, like centre, the centre circle, and he'll just hit the ball, spin, hit the ball first time to the sideline, whether it be to a wing or a fullback, and he spins and races up the pitch himself. It's really a shame. He made quite a few good runs yesterday that no one picked him out on the return from. Um, but like I say, just so much involvement as well. Obviously scored the first goal, then got the assist for Lacelso, then played a big part in the third goal, um, and even the little run away from Lacelso to be able to give him the space to move into. Such a, I still think he's underrated, Son. I really do. I, d I don't think people realise, even when he's not touching the ball, how much he does during a game. Um, and he gets back and tracks back a lot as well, even though he's up top now centrally. Um, and also, a little interesting stat, that goal was Sonny's 50th Premier League away goal, which makes him just the seventh player in the competition to score 50 home goals, 50 away goals, and provide 50 assists for a team in the Premier League. Um, and actually, he's the first player to ever do that for Tottenham. I presume that must mean that Harry Kane never got to 50 assists in the Premier League, which would maybe make sense because he had one decent season, didn't he, of assists when he got the Playmaker Award, but actually he didn't rack up the assists, whereas Sonny often does. So, I mean, that's an incredible achievement. 50-50-50, home goals, away goals, and assists. That's brilliant. Oh, another little stat there. Didn't notice that one. Son becomes the first ever player in Premier League history to score away from home against four different reigning champions. Oof! What a player for the big occasion he really is. Or oh, a little thing before I forget it later. Jamie Donny is the 800th and 80th player in the Spurs history to, to play a game for them. He gets one of those legacy numbers, doesn't he now? Mm -hmm.